Marcus, how much more of an enlightened uh, defensive player are you now compared to this time a year ago? Uh, I'm sorry, I was a little background noise. Can you repeat? Uh, yeah, I said, how much more of an enlightened defensive player are you now compared to this time a year ago? And where do you see yourself kind of fitting in in this revamped sort of secondary? Uh, enlightened. <laughs> I like that word. Um, you know, you. Uh, I've been in this program a little while, of course. And, um, you know, as you, you know, practice and you go through things, um, you learn different defenses, different schemes. Um, you know, you get a great sense of football, but until you, you know, step out on that field and, you know, really um, take in that, that game experience, it's hard to really see, you know, where, where you need to improve, um, you know, how you fit into the defense, you know, what your limitations are. And so just being able to have that experience last year, as crazy as 2020 was, um, I'd say I'm a, a lot more enlightened um, in that sense. So uh, just being able to take that information from last year and um, just craft craft myself into the football player I want to be this year has been, been great. So, righty, we'll go next to Jeremy Birmingham. <clears throat> Marcus, um, how important has this spring been for you and Josh as sort of the old guys in the room now um, with so many young guys that have not played? I mean, it, it seems like the, the story of your upcoming season almost gets written right now, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I'd say, and this is a, a emphasis really from Coach Barnes um, and along with Coach Combs, is that we really wanted to, you know, bring back that that BIA mentality, um, that that culture. And we've got so many young and inexperienced guys that even if they were here last year, you know, you didn't have that that full off season with Coach Mick, um, you know, that that spring ball, that you know, all those those push-ups and sit-ups we do preparing for the, the, the team of North game. Like you didn't have those experiences. And so being, being able to, you know, bring that, that mindset um, to the practice field has been a benefit to, to me and Josh and some of the older guys and the younger guys as well, so that they can, they can see, how, you know, how we do things and how we operate um, the right way here. And so I think that's been a big focus for us is just mindset and culture. And um, I think it, it's translating. And uh, I think we've seen a lot of improvement top to bottom, and uh, it's really exciting to see, so. Thanks. All right, we'll go next to Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus District. Hi, Marcus. Uh, could you kind of compare and contrast the styles, uh, both in, in, in style and substance with Kerry Combs now to Matt Barnes? Right. Um, <laughs> actually more similar than you'd think. Um, I find myself sometimes watching tape and you'll see like the, the end zone copy and they're both doing like the same celebration or they're the same kind of coaching style. So you see kind of similarities in how they, they coach. They're very uh, energetic um, and juice kind of guys, that I guess that we like to say around here. Um, and I think with, with Coach Barnes and he's had the time, you know, this spring, which we, we of course missed last year is to really just um, – you know, take the, the technique and the details of, of football specifically. You know, when you get into, you know, camp and the season and, you know, just the, the weird year that we had last year, a lot of a lot of the focus had to be on, you know, uh, uh, scheme, personnel. But now we're just really focused on becoming better football players. And I think that's really uh, what Coach Barnes is passionate about. And um, it, it's really been shown in how we've been practicing and how we've been performing. So uh, thanks for that. Thank all righty, next up, we'll go to Nathan Baer, Cleveland.com. Marcus, I guess, where are you working right now? Any specific places in this defense? And any place where you kind of think that you can contribute the, the best to this team? Right, right. Um, so I've been focusing almost exclusively in the slot. Um, uh, if you watched any last year, I think my role is sort of morphed into more of a um, – more of a safety role last year. Um, I've definitely been working more in, in the slot this year and trying to really just, you know, hone my, my, my coverage skills as, as well as, you know, the, the physicality aspect of, of, uh, of football. You know, I've, I've taken this time during spring to, you know, really just focus on my strength, tackling, you know, block destruction, all the details of, of being a defensive player that I think we can all improve on. And so, um, just trying to bring bring that physicality back to to the position and, and coverage skills and use my my skill set to 
to, you know, the best of my ability. Um, so that's been my focus this spring and hopefully moving forward towards the season and the rest of this off season. So thank you. Next up, Austin Ward, Leonard Monroe. Hey, Marcus, as you mentioned, you've been around uh, a long time. You've seen some really good BIA units. Um, and then last year, you know, we understand the excuses of what it may have made it challenging, but as a veteran and having seen both things, how much mm -hmm. conversation is there about what happened with the past defense and the national ranking for that last year? And, and right. you know, what is that like in, the, in that meeting room to try and reestablish that culture? Um, I can say uh, as a program, as a defense, as a unit, and even personally, um, we've all, you know, taken the approach of just getting better every single day. Um, you know, some, some guys call it, you know, the 1%, you know, getting that 1% or finding that inch um, every day. But uh, just really bringing that, you know, that, that mindset is how we've been able to approach, not really looking back. And I can say um, just as a, as a unit, this is one of the most talented, if not the most talented defensive back unit that, that I've seen since I've been here. Um, seems like these coaches out, out recruit themselves every year and it's it's great to see the, the talent and the, the explosion and you know just the skill set that these guys have and so like I mentioned earlier just trying to bring that 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 mindset of BIA back to the the room that has so much talent um I think we're, we're definitely breeding something special and I'm um, just looking looking forward to 2021 2020 was 2020 but you know it's the same guys in that room and we're just improving every day, and I think it's going to show. All righty, next up, Tony Gerdeman, Buckeye Scoop. Marcus, you've got uh, three quarterbacks on this team who have never thrown a pass in college ball. Yeah. What, uh, what you've seen from them and how confident you guys are that the, you've got something there? Uh, you know, like I mentioned about the, the DB room, you look at, you know, really across the board, um, these coaches are recruiting their ass off, man. And so, you know, you look over there and the way these quarterbacks sling the ball, you know, just seeing their their improvement day to day, um, it's really exciting. Um, you know, I'm sure I'm sure I can't, you know, give any specifics, but uh, I, I've been really impressed, you know, with, with the growth of these young guys, um, especially with them not having any any game experience, like you said. And just taking that step every day, man. Just every day working to get better. It's was today, April 1st, man. We we kick off, uh, you know, in September. So, you know, just taking taking that step, man. Uh, it, it's been great to see. So I'm excited for those guys to see what they do. All righty, we'll go next to Dan Hope from 11 Warrior. Hey, Marcus, you mentioned you're playing almost exclusively in the slot. Uh, Leif and Ransom played some there last year, too. How do you think you two can complement each other in the secondary this year? Uh, yeah, we um, uh, we talk about that a lot. Uh, you know, Lathan is a guy that came in um, really more ready than I've, uh, I've seen a lot of defensive backs. You know, he has a very um, professional mindset in how he approaches the game. He's always asking questions, and we're able to bounce things off of each other. And so uh, – I'm not sure how to how to work out this season. I'm sure the coaches will have a plan, but I, I've really just been impressed with, with the steps Lathan's taken and, and how eager he is to to just learn and get better. You know, so um, like I said, it'll be up to the coaches how, how that works out. But um, his skill set is something that definitely needs to be can be used and, and needs to be used. So we'll see. Thanks, Thank Dan. You. All righty. Next, we'll go to uh, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Marcus, uh, you said you work exclusively uh, at the slot corner spot. There's there's an opening on the outside. Did you ever have discussions with coaches or, or talk about uh, playing on the outside? And then, and if not, what do you feel you kind of mm -hmm. like best about the slot? Um, uh, to answer your question uh, directly, uh, no, there hasn't really been any conversation. But just from a, a personal um, a personal standpoint, I really wanted to take this spring to focus, you know, uh, on my man-to-man -man coverage and my coverage specifically. And so, you know, a lot of drills, I, I, I do slide out to the outside. And, uh, you know, I play corner for, shoot, since eighth grade. You know, it, it's fun being out there on that island, you know, and getting that feeling again of, of really just being the man across from you. Um, sometimes you get in the slot, you know, you you might have help, you know, or in the post or in the slot, but you're on the, on the edge. 
it's you and that receiver, man. And so trying to bring that mindset to, to my man-to-man -man coverage and my skill set has been really beneficial, I think. And so continuing to work that that skill set, even if it, if it doesn't happen this year, maybe in the future, just having that versatility, to, which I believe is to play all five positions in the defensive backfield. So, um, yeah, it's been great for me. All right, we'll do two more. Uh, we'll go to Patrick Murphy first. Patrick. Marcus, you told us, I think it was during the playoff that you were coming back uh, this yeah. year. Um, obviously, you have things you want to accomplish. You mentioned cover skills and things like that. But what what, what was your driving force and, and how are you working to achieve what you want in this extra year you get here? My driving force. Um, it was actually, I was, I was having this conversation, you know, with myself today. Um, I know that sounds kind of weird. But, uh, you know, just uh, constantly asking yourself, um, you know, what's that motivation? What's that driving force? I mean, I think in the past, uh, really the last couple of years, it was, you know, fear of being injured. Um, that was kind of my driving force in the off season. It's like, okay, I'm going to put this extra time in the weight room because, you know, I can't have another injury. I can't afford to be injured. Like my, my clock's ticking. And I think now it's just from a, a standpoint of just, wanting to improve, wanting to get better. You know, when you when you have that mindset of, I've got this goal, X, Y, and Z, um, you know, life doesn't work out that way. Um, you know, I'm sure every guy that steps in this program, they want to be, you know, top 10 draft pick. They want to have all these accolades, you know, player of the year, whatever that may be. And so for me, it's just been waking up every day and getting better. You know, how much can I, can I improve in, in this area, that area? in this area. And I think um, I, I've really just seen myself take off in the last few months, few months since the season's ended, uh, just having that mindset and that approach to this year. Um, and it's been great. And I, I can't wait to see the, the results of, uh, of me doing that. So uh, I'm great to, I'm glad to be back. I'm excited. Um, I think it's going to be a great year. All right, and we'll wrap Marcus up with Jeremy Birmingham. Jeremy. Marcus, just uh, to kind of play off that, and this may sound abrasive, but after all the struggles and the self-doubt and all those things over the last few years, why didn't you quit? Who was who the person or the people that kind of kept you, you know, dialed in? And how is that experience for you now helping you as a leader with those young guys that we already talked about? Um, you know, so many times I get kind of emotional when I think about it. Um, but I, I got I to give it all to my parents, man. Um, you know, I was raised in a sports household. If you've seen any like sports movies, I kind of had the crazy sports dad, you know, you're, you're doing this sport this spring, and, you know, always working out in the basement. Um, and I think I can really attribute it to, to wrestling. Uh, I kind of think about this all the time, but I grew up wrestling as my first sport. Um, and there's not a lot of glory in wrestling. Um, I remember growing up and, you know, all my friends played basketball, I went to school with Caleb Wesson, you know, big hooper, you know, I'm, I'm in the back, you know, in the gym, just wrestling, man, just getting better, just having that fight in me. And, uh, I'm sorry, I just, you know, just, just having that, that fight in me, you know, uh, you know, I've never been a quitter and, um, you know, just kind of having that, that mindset, you know, that, you know, whatever it is, you know, I'm just going to fight through it. You know, there's going to be better days. This will pass. That will pass. You know, just, just, just keep going. And um, I swear I'm not crying. Uh, you know, just, just, just keep going, man. Just keep fighting. Um, and, and you never know what will happen. What will end up on the other side. And I think God has just had a plan for me. You know, if he didn't, you know, I still wouldn't be here. You know, I'm in my fifth year, hopefully going into my – my second year start and then uh, two, three years ago, shoot, I was typing on my resume, you know, seeing, you know, what, you know, what I wanted to do after football, you know, so just having this opportunity, even if, you know, it doesn't go as planned, just having this opportunity, man, to continue to do the, the sport that I love and to continue to have that, that, that wrestling and that fighting mindset um, has just taken me so far in life and I hope it takes me farther. So, uh, yeah, that's all I got. Thank you. Awesome. Marcus, thank you very much for sharing that with us. Really, really appreciate your time today. Thank you.
Thanks for watching. Be sure to click on that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. Come visit us over at BuckeyeGrove.com for all the best Ohio State information on the web.